Hi everyone, welcome. Today we're gonna to talk about providence and destiny. We're gonna talk about developing your spiritual sensitivity. And not just to be like, oh, I'm spiritual, like that, you know, but what I just noticed is I got back from a high school reunion. I'd never been to one before. And I saw all these people that I knew when we were little and when, you know, little kids, you know, when we were, um, some of them I knew since I was six years old. And so I knew them and I knew they were telling me true stories, you know, and I got to see, it was like, when you get your life quiet, I made a one minute reel about this right when I got back, but this is gonna be later. Um, when you when you oh that's what i was going to say right because the one minute reel was about developing your spiritual sensitivity when you learn how to quiet the outer world my name's dr cheryl meyer by the way i'm a psychologist in my day job and anyway i equip people uh, i help you navigate your spiritual awakening and all of life is a spiritual awakening Look at these trees, look, there's some beautiful leaves, just. I, I show the trees so you can get grounded. Just first feel yourself, be present. I was with my cousin over the weekend because he let me stay in his place um, while I was at the reunion in Texas. And I told him I could probably make Ugh, a thousand I think I said a thousand or a hundred videos over the conversations that I've had so I'm just going to do my best to distill it for you right now is when you quiet your outer world see I don't watch the news or tv uh, I will sometimes I have a tv in my house I'll sometimes watch the hobbit and the lord of the rings um because Tolkien went to mass every day he was a devout catholic and knew 50 languages and he's super intelligent and um and there are really great shows to watch and movies and stuff like that i'm not saying they're all bad or anything like that i'm just saying you know i i have other things that i'm doing you know like i'm outside a lot and um skating in nature and stuff like that getting in the flow being with people um and so i'm not putting down any of those mediums i'm just saying when you quiet your life where you're not getting external uh, the whole world telling you how this how this world operates you know imagine like the people i'm thinking like grizzly adams like he goes out and lives in the woods there was a tv show about a guy with a bear um a long long time ago or alone and stuff like that you know it you get a different perspective on life when you, if you were just on a tropical island with no media whatsoever, no phone for a while, no any of that. I do watch YouTube videos because I make YouTube videos, you know, and I appreciate what I've learned from, from here or whatever platform you're on. So first, develop a stillness within yourself. And then when you go to something like this, you notice it's like when I try to describe mystic experiences for people, it's not to go chase after mystic experiences. Your whole life is a mystic experience because we're in a kind of matrix, you know? Um, I don't know if you know or not. Uh, the, I'm part Native American. The Native Americans say it. Uh, we're in, they say, Metakiawashan. We're in the mind womb of God. We're all one in this in God's dream. <sighs> when I say, you know, like take a deep breath, know yourself as your as your eternal essence, as what God created you in 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 the image and likeness of God, of divine love. You're made out of love. And so what was great about 
seeing these people is a lot of them knew me before I developed my personality outside of that. You know, we're just playing on the playground, you know, just being with each other. There's a lot of being with each other. And so, you know, you don't have to like not tell them your age. You're all the same age. <laughs> you don't have to because sometimes people judge you by external things, you know, and so I just will often keep my mouth shut because I'm just like, I don't, I don't want people to preconceive me, you know, I, I skate with a bunch of 22 year olds and um, one of my best friends is 23, two of them. Well, anyway, um, and so it's like, I see us as ageless beings anyway, but the one thing I was going to point out I got two visions and I just saw them in my mind's eye before this. Okay, I remember one, okay, two, okay. Okay, I'll just say them both. Hopefully I don't forget. All right, is um, one of them is I saw a car and I saw someone getting out behind the car and pushing the car and it's like, I'm in a car right now. I wasn't planning on making my video in the car today but I'm in a different place today but and so imagine if you have a fancy car that has all these capabilities like seat heaters and air condition and, and you know, the engine that can drive so fast and you can get to places and you're back behind it pushing your car and, or maybe someone else is pushing and you're inside and you're like, oh, this is a great car, but you didn't turn it on, you know, I'll turn mine off. You didn't put the keys in and turn it on. And so this is how I was seeing the vision that I got about that was that you are a spiritual being in a physical body you have so many abilities if jesus walked on water he was above the elements if he was able to take bread and fish and hold them up to god and say thank you and multiply them then there's something more to this world unless you think those stories are just made up and there are the disciples that were eyewitnesses to these things that died saying these things because they wouldn't renounce them you know they were crucified i think all of them were killed except for um, John. And I think John was kept alive because he was put in charge of Mary. You know, at the cross, Jesus said, this is now your mom and your son. And so um, that's just an impression I got. I'm not saying that theology or anything. But, and so I feel like, because I pray and meditate and everything, that the divine was just showing me, God, divine love was showing me how so many people are going around pushing their car and it's like no get in that thing just put the keys in learn how to access yourself as a spiritual being not as something to use not as something so you feel more in your ego like you're more spiritual than other people but because you are made with these capacities you're it's like um i taught i met with this man named red elk you know and i had all these interviews with him and um, and he said, um, he's a Native American Christian shaman. Go figure all that, right? But uh, he said, you know, I appeared because you needed a teacher and you appeared in the matrix for me because I needed a student like you, you know, to come and learn. Um, but what I was going to say that he said was... Um, not just about the matrix thing hold on my mind because i have all these different things and i'll remember what red elk taught me he taught me about the dream work the dream cheryl work the dream you're in the dream of god so work the dream learn how to work this dream you know so you can live at your fullest capacity everyone says i'm living my best life well, you're not you're not if you're trapped in the word for sin is missing the point of all of life. If you're trapped in sin, because you're just running around after after food and, and sex and ambition and money, you know, and I'm not judging anyone. Don't judge yourself. Just call yourself. I'm going to turn this back on because my phone just got hot. Um, um, you know, call yourself to these higher places. You're worth these higher places. All right. So 
What I was going to say, and then hopefully I'll remember what Red Elk taught me. He taught me so many things. Um, but is that what the Holy Spirit will do or what a mystic experience is like, is like you're seeing all of the world, you know, you're seeing these trees or something, you're seeing people walk around and you hear words or you get songs, but it's kind of like someone has a light highlighter and they're just, or it's like if you're watching something and someone puts a word in bold print, it's like you're getting impressions because you're so quiet in your life and you're committed to doing the will of God, like just the will of love, you know, um, instead of running around. That's what I was going to do. Maybe I was going to say something about bread and circus. All they do is they, they keep you hooked in by giving you entertainment and food and you're pulled in these different directions. That's what I was going to say. Good. Thank God. <laughs> Thank you, God. Um, Red Elk taught me, he was saying, you know, it's kind of like we all had the ability to have telepathy with each other or to walk on water and then the devil, however you understand, you know, comes around and is like, look, I can give you a phone so you can call each other on the phone when you used to be able to communicate telepathically to each other, you know? Now I'm a psychologist, so I'm, I have my doctorate and I've been doing that for 22 years and, or 20, over 20 and I, and I, um, you know, and so people think I'm all science, you know, and I have that, that side of myself, you know, where, where I am very intellectual and I got my doctorate and I studied all this stuff, but I know ourselves. I know myself as a soul. I've had so many amazing mystical experiences that aren't just made up. I know they're not made up. And so I'm not going to deny that we are souls. We're God consciousness in a body. And I don't want anyone to be missing any of that stuff. So what I was saying is when I met, you know, and so it's presented to us like, hey, I can give you this thing, but then you have to use a cell phone instead of doing what you knew how to do naturally. You here, here's a boat instead of learning how to trust and have faith. You have to have faith for these things, but to be able to walk on water, you know, I'm not saying I can't, <laughs> I'm not saying that. Um, but I have had many mystical experiences. Anyway, I won't go into all of that right now because I don't want to alienate people, but I don't want to leave things out either, right? So seeing all these people from my high school that knew me and my essence, that I knew them and their essence before our personalities wrapped around those and before we ran after whatever the world taught us to run after or whatever, we just knew each other. Like we used to pick pecans on the ground in, in, in Texas and draw faces on them and play, you know? And so just seeing, like some of them had lost their siblings. Some of them had been through cancer. Some of them had faced death. Some of them had faced the most the wildest circumstances. One of my friends was almost kidnapped and I didn't know about that story, you know? Like there's so there's so many times and what the divine, what God was showing me, truly, I wasn't making this up. I just kept seeing the hand of God. That's why I'm saying destiny, you know, and providence. I kept seeing the hand of God like a golden thread, you know, working through each of their lives and helping them out and calling them back. It's, you're like, you're so fortunate and blessed when God, even if God is calling you back right now to a life of love and not one of of substance and dissipation or whatever you want to call it of running after nothingness things that promise you a high you know I have a lyric in one of my songs that says you know you promised the world and left me with nothing you know because I was like reeling on the floor because I thought someone loved me but it's okay because it, it it brought me back to the divine love it brought me back to wait I have to be grounded in divine love I can't go chasing after you know anyone that promises something and doesn't choose to follow through for whatever reason. That's on them. I get to follow through by not giving myself away to empty promises, by not running after empty things that keep me high in the moment or numb or make you feel good about yourself. Like you look at your bank account and then it's like all of it can be taken away and then what's your worth? What did you build it on? Now, um, the people on Instagram and other platforms it's going to go away the rest of this is going to be on youtube so follow me there so you get these videos right but i'm going to wrap this up the other vision that i had was 
I had this vision where I'm running full speed like this way and there's all these people running that way running like their faces that way and I'm going this way and and I'm like going towards the sun you know there's the sun up there but you know and it's just like it's like where are you going where are you going you know I'm not going to turn around but I, I looked and I'm like where I don't understand where are you guys all running to I don't understand that it didn't make sense and they think that I'm crazy because I'm running this direction but I have a knowing and now sometimes I'll sit down and I'll cry and I'll just be like are you sure this is the direction and and it just feels so awkward and so weird because um so many people are running the other way but you know there's a verse that Jesus conveyed and Jesus is always teaching higher consciousness he's always teaching how to love on a deeper level on a higher level how to get your sanity truly back how to have that peace that passes all understanding how to be aligned how to be in the yin and the yang which is like action and non-action passive and active how to it's like Mary and Martha represented both of those things you know how to be contemplative how to be in wisdom how to be in love in love you can always live in love you know i keep this heart necklace on and remind myself drop down into love but he said wide is the gate to destruction and narrow is the path to life and few find it only few find it and so you know i welcome you if you're on my youtube channel or wherever you're finding this to follow me and to subscribe and get the notifications and all that comment so that this can grow because all I'm talking about is this and all I plan to ever talk about is this you know I saw this YouTube channel um, this video that was like this is how you grow your YouTube channel I've only watched a couple of those right I'm like I don't know how to do this I know how to teach psychology I know how to teach spiritual path I know how to teach surrender everything for alignment with divine love because nothing else is is worth chasing after nothing no thing you know Elliot has that song everything means nothing to me and he's going up the scale you know everything means no thing to me it's just things you know and we we utilize them in our lives but they're not you what are you gonna do once you one of my friends had this famous person's instrument I, I don't want to identify that person. I love him so much. I learned so much from him from a three-hour conversation we had at the reunion. But I'm like, so what are you going to do with someone's autographed something? You know what I mean? It's like, so you have that. Now what? You know, and I'm not making fun. I'm glad he has it because it's an instrument that he may or may not play. You know, not the one that's signed. But it's like, I just want people to, I want you, I want all people to know your worth, your real worth, your, that you're cared for, that I saw that the divine was like a good shepherd that kept bringing these people back to the heart of God, to the heart of love, to the heart of not being enslaved by these other things. Yeah, so narrow is the path and few find it. But if you find it, so I'm not just, I'm not just going, hey, follow my channel. I'm saying, oh yeah, the YouTube video guy says um, he, he had like a million views or something. And he's like, look, you got to just get really comfortable saying the same thing 60,000 different ways, you know? And I'm like, oh yeah, that is what I'm doing. And then it just gave me more ease to go like, I'm just going to keep teaching this over and over and over again in different ways. And it's always fun and dynamic to teach it. I'll teach it while I'm roller skating. I teach it when I'm singing. I teach it just by being with you. Being with you. You know, I don't care what they say anymore. It's like all I want to do is be with you. That's how I feel like the divine love is just like, it was so touching. It was so touching what was highlighted to me is that the, that God just wants to be with you. The divine love just wants to be with you. You came from God. You're, we're all drawn back to, to the divine love because we're just meant to bathe in that and live in that love and be that love for other people. Be love. All right, I'll wrap this up. All right, I wish you so much love. Thank you so much for being here. Share this with someone that um, wants to learn how to be deeper in presence and learn that you are cared for and you're cherished and you're loved.